want to move this proposal and these two lectures ahead. So, uh, in my first lecture, I had an outline, and these two two things are at this place. Now I move them ahead. So, the proposal is due one week after the midterm. And the reason we are doing this is that we want you to have more time to work on your project. Otherwise, if we move in here, you will only have two, two weeks to finish your project. That will be too difficult for you. So, uh, remember this thing. For this project, you can have your own project, anything you are interested in. And we are going to give you some uh, candidate projects that you can also work on. So if you have no project, just wait until I uh, give that to you. Okay? Now, uh, this, today's lecture is about GIS, which is Geographic Information System. And this lecture actually is very difficult for me to prepare, because I know some of you already have a wide knowledge about GIS, and some of you are completely ignorant about GIS, and you are all standing in this classroom, so how can I satisfy all of you? And can I make a small survey today? Uh, how many of you have never used GIS? Could you please raise your hand? Okay. Okay, several. And how many of you think that you are uh, an expert on GIS? <laughs> okay. Good. Good. So, the first thing is about definition of GIS. I want to give you my definition. I think GIS is just about modeling. Uh, modeling of the Earth, or modeling part of the Earth. And it doesn't involve anything uh, with the Moon or the Mars. Uh, today's outline, in order to give you a lecture that is different from your GIS class, I changed the lecture from the traditional theory-oriented to task-oriented. So in today's lecture, I'm not going to tell you what this is, what this is. I'm going to tell you uh, the, pro the story about using transients and GIS to model UB North Campus. And I divided the task into eight ta subtasks. And this project happened in spring 2009. And we had a team which includes two faculty members and two student members, which is Lee, Lily and me. <coughs> so, before we talk about any task uh, of these, let's talk about task zero, which is to choose the GIS package you are going to use. Some of you, when you heard of GI when you hear GIS, you probably refer to ArcGIS, which is developed by a company called Esri. But I want to tell you, this is not your only option. This is a figure, uh, uh, a survey conducted by this company of 2009. And this figure is about the US GIS software market. The total number of money is uh, 2.8 billion. And you, we can see S3. S3 is having a big share, the biggest share. But it has some strong competitors. So in terms of, in terms of commercial GIS software, you don't have only one option. And here are companies. And I want to point to you this company. Maybe uh, it's more famous than others. It's Autodesk. It's famous for AutoCAD and 3ds Max. And these are commercial options. You have also some free options. Actually, you have a lot of them. And you can have like QGIS or UDIG and all this GraphGIS. I want to point to you that as a student, you get this AutoCAD, you got, get all Autodesk software for free. So, access this website if you need any <coughs> Autodesk software. And if you need more, just go to the wiki, and you can go to this link, and you can see a lot of them. But since UB has a GIS uh, license server, which provides 500 floating licenses, we finally decided to use ArcGIS. And ArcGIS is a very big, very big concept. And they want to, 
do three things in the middle, spatial analysis, visualization, cartography, and spatial data management. That's the three core things they want to do. But they divide the whole scope of ArcGIS into five parts. Here is desktop, That's desktop applications. Here's server GIS, which is for building uh, GIS servers such as Google Maps. And online GIS and these things. Here is mobile GIS, so you can access GIS information on your mobile device, such as cell phone or other customized devices. So here is the first thing that, this is the second thing that many people will confuse, will be confused about. In terms of ArcGIS, we first, we can first divide ArcGIS desktop into several levels, product levels. ArcReader, ArcView, ArcEditor, ArcInfo, they all refer to the product level. So there is not single, no single program called ArcInfo. ArcInfo is a package. And let's talk about ArcReader. ArcReader is free. It's free for everyone. Then if you pay some money, you can get ArcView, and then you can get Arc Editor. Then the ultimate one will be ArcInfo. These are packages, product levels. But it's very confusing that somebody will tell you, I use ArcReview to do something. I use ArcInfo to do something. So I post put two question marks here. Actually, there was, I mean, in ancient time, there was a software package called ArcView, which is also developed by S3. And there was another one called ArcInfo, which is also developed by S3. But I don't think you are going to use them very often nowadays. So remember, these four things are referring to different product levels. This is most expensive. This is free. And when we talk about the components of ArcGIS desktop, we have these things. ArcMap, ArcCatalog, ArcToolbox, and ArcGlobe and ArcScene. ArcGlobe and ArcScene are used for 3D modeling. 3D modeling. So uh, let's just skip this part. We don't have time for this. And when we talk about ArcGIS, 90% of the time, we are referring to ArcMap, which is the main application. And we have app catalog. These things are related but different. Let's, let me make you an analogy. So if we are talking about photos, let's assume maps are photos. The map editor, editor or the photo editor is our map. The album is our catalog. OK? Our map is for displaying and editing a certain map. Our catalog is a catalog or an album of maps. And Arc Toolbox is only used for some advanced analysis. I will tell you about this slide. Now, after the desktop application, we have Arc Server. Arc Server is uh, another field. It's used for companies that are hosting GIS applications. So you can access them online. There are two famous uh, components within Arc Server. The first one is called Arc SDE. ArcSDE is for building spatial database upon existing database <coughs> management systems. For example, you have an Oracle. Oracle is used for creating, managing uh, relations of relation uh, database, relational database. And if you add ArcSDE to it, you can build a spatial database. Okay, ArcSDE is a plugin. You can see it as a plugin to a database system to provide spatial data access, the access. And Arc IMS is for, is a server for providing online data map interaction. So you see a Google map. That thing is kind of interactive map. That's built by Arc IMS, okay? Now I want to talk about Arc Objects and Arc Engine. These are two concepts that I that can hardly be distinguished sometimes. So Arc Objects is the library or software development kit that S3 used to build all its applications. So with Arc Objects, theoretically speaking, you can build your own Arc Map, Arc Catalog, and so on. The problem of Arc Objects is that it's very complicated 
and it only comes with ArcGIS desktop. So in order to run anything that's developed upon Arc objects, you need an ArcGIS desktop license, and which is very expensive. Understand that? So they created another software development kit called ArcGIS Engine, which is less expensive and has less functionality. Okay? When you are doing your programming, they are basically uh, the same. They are almost the same. Okay? And the last one is called ArcGIS Online. If you access this website, ArcGIS.com, you will be able to create your own map, your own application from the GIS community. And they have several sets of maps. For example, if you go to this, uh, go to ArcGIS.com, you can select your base map from like 12 uh, data sets. And you can make your own map, you can make your own application, and you can share it with the community. So that's everything about ArcGIS. Do you have any question? Now, the first task for model UB transit, uh, UB model, uh, UB North Campus, is to view data. We obtain some, we obtain some data, and the first task for us is to view them. I mean, whenever everyone sends you a new data set, the first thing you want to do is always viewing them, right? Before we talk about how to view it, here are the con basic concepts in GIS. GIS, we can see it as a map system. We want to see the, we want to model the real world, and we com decompose the real world into layers. There are two kinds of layers: raster, which is uh, a set of cells, and vector, which can, which are uh, geometries. We have, basically, we have three kinds of vectors, points, lines, and polygons. And for raster, we have 2D rasters, which is flat. For example, we use these 2D rasters to reflect the land usage. And we have 3D ra rasters. For example, we use a 3D raster to represent the elevation of any place in the map. Okay, so make sure you know that one map is equal to one set of layers, and there are two kinds of layers, vectors and rasters. Okay, now I want to show you something. So we open the arc map. The data we got are stored in D, drive D, and the data set folder. The first thing comes up. I'm sure that 90% of you, if you never attend a GIS class, after somebody sent you a shape file, they told you, <coughs> I sent you some data. And you open, the, you open this folder. You see a lot of files. But in Microsoft Word, you are supposed to double click on the file to open it. But this doesn't exist in ArcGIS. And you see a lot of files, and you don't know how to open them. So you think of another way, you go to ArcMap. Uh, you go to ArcMap. You go to File and Open. And you go to this place. And you still don't see anything you can open. So that's the first confusing point. Why? I want to emphasize that, according to the last slide, one map is consisting of many layers. So you are not going to open a map here, but you are going to add a layer by pressing this button. Plus, see? This button. Okay. How many of you have experienced this problem? Would you raise your hand? Right. Okay. okay. So remember to add layers. If you click add layers, you will be able to select these shape files. So the first thing I got is about